It's so easy, isn't it, to blame other people and not take ownership? So easy. So easy. And it's funny because a lot of the mantras that us fitness people like to share mm -hmm. across the internet <laughs> are like, no excuses. Get up and get oh. her done. Oh, I know where you're going Good with luck this. With that. And then and then the parallel to these people struggling in their lives in other ways is really quite jarring, isn't it? This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. So let me tell you something really funny. This is how bad I am at tests. <laughs> so I almost like I almost flunked out of school basically all the way to university. I was telling Amber this because Amber, Amber and Alex have organized a uh, trivia night for our company on Saturday as like a bonding thing woo, woo. That we're going to do over Zoom. And I was telling Amber that I'm comically bad at trivia and so bad at tests. But like, and I thought that I was stupid literally up until fourth year of university. I mean, really? I squeaked into university. It's a whole another story of how I squeaked into university, but like I squeaked into university. <laughs> and then fourth year of university, my kinesiology degree became mostly like pound court counter like point counterpoint like essay mm -hmm. where we right. could explain ourselves mm -hmm. oh. and all of a sudden now my 60s turned into 95s oh I mean, so that, that is your forte different. so clearly i mean who would have thought um writing and explaining to myself and not listening to other people is something that i'm good at <laughs> who would have thought shocker but, Jonathan, shocker just Totally shocked by that. But I, uh, to test the OTA, the Online Trainer Academy certification exam, I took the exam myself. Now, keep in mind, I literally wrote the textbook that the exam is based off of. I got 83%. Yeah. Terrible, <laughs> <story. laughs> Terrible story. Terrible story, yeah. This is embarrassing. Uh, so <laughs> Can I log out? So I'm logging out. Of our listeners who have gotten, you know, lower scores in, in your OTA, now you don't have to feel bad. Like, right. it's totally cool. Like, and nobody's trying to trick you. Like, it's not a hard exam. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not like there's a bunch where it's like, oh, could it be B? Could it be C? They're both like, like, it's pretty clear, like, what's right and what's not right. <laughs> right. Um, do you do you train in mad. person now through this certification? Do you train on a bus? Do you train in <laughs> underwater or do you train online? Mm. <laughs> do you train in a show? Oh, oh, right. Right. I don't know. I was on the bus that one day. Uh, oh, this is hard. Dropping out, which is which is part of our tech our part of our con our content for today, right? You know. Uh, do you know, sort of, sort of some of the folks are saying things like it's too hard, it won't work. We'll, we'll circle back around to that because Jonathan wanted to talk about, you know, some of the excuses that we run into today. Uh, I want to talk about tell him, tell excuses. Him. Tell him what you want to talk about, Jonathan. Mm, I want to talk about kind? excuses. I want to talk about all kinds of excuses. And I yes. want to call everybody out on do it. their crap. The same as like... I need to be called out of my crap the same as we all do. It's just well, this, it's this fascinating kind of trend, this fascinating phenomenon where um, somebody says that they want to, whatever, pick, pick your goal. They want to lose weight. They want to gain muscle. They want to start a business. They want to right. whatever. All of it. But then when they're given the opportunity to do it, mm. they find a reason not to. Could be price, could be yeah. time, could be, and then they wonder afterwards why they can't achieve that thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's 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 to me it's the craziest thing. The reason that it was brought up um, recently and that I want to talk about it is, you know, so we're we're at the point when we're recording this as of like yesterday, today, where we did a $0 down offer for the first time ever for the Online Trainer Academy. Mm -hmm. And we had a ton of people join and it's been super fun. But now, of course, the first payment is about to go through. And so we're getting all the, all the notices of like of people messaging, basically asking to cancel before the first mm -hmm. payment comes out. Right. And I mean, in a lot of cases, it was just like people never intended to stay. Right. Right. There, there's kind of like three categories, right? There's, there's the category of the somebody who wants to steal the thing. Mm -hmm. And so they cancel within the first three days because they right. basically yeah. log in, they download everything they can. And then they, and then they say that it's not for them. Um, yes. Then there's, then there's the people who um, 
we're always going to cancel, but want to milk it as much as possible. And so they cancel right before their first payment comes out. And then there's the category of people who are like, they're not quite sure and they're testing it out. And if you do a good job, then, you know, they'll stay. Right, right. And, uh, and it's interesting because, you know, I, I've, I've seen a couple of the cancellation requests and they're like, oh, I can't afford it. It's like, you're telling me that you've had 30 days to try this out. <laughs> And now we're asking you for a payment of $87, which is less than you're going to make from a single client. Right. And you have another 30 days before your next payment comes up. So you're telling me that within 60 days, 60 days, you don't think that you can get a single client. That is not a problem of you not being able to afford it because literally everybody can get a single client. I guarantee you when you join the online trainer Academy that within 90 days, you're going to make at least a thousand dollars from online training or we'll give you your money back. Right. And we don't give people's money back very often. Mm -hmm. So you get a client. So, cause it, they get, well, they get like five, um, that's, a, that's right. based on five several. clients at 200 bucks. Several they get several. Clients. So like when you're telling me that you can't afford something that's $87. The price of Catalina's drink. The price of Carolina's <laughs> purple drink. You're not, not telling me that. that you can't afford it. You're telling me that you don't believe in yourself. Oh, I just had this conversation today, Jonathan. I'm so glad that you brought this up. I'm, I'm so glad this this is our topic for today. Talk to the uh, people, then. It's, it's, it's just a great topic. Well, first of all, Kettle's got her, her you got your buble, your bubble, your bubble. Yeah, That's my what it bubbly, is. Yeah. My buble, yeah. yeah. Nice and it's pink. Isn't um, it wonderful? It's so nice to have a drink on the online <laughs> trainer show. Be a French yeah. Canadian oh, romantic, <laughs> sweet, <laughs> sweet magic of a beautiful words. I mean, honestly, they don't—they don't, the they don't throw at us money for advertising. I don't know what right. they're doing with right. their life. I don't, like at this I don't, point, they're wasting a resource. They're My wasting name a resource. Is not Michael Bublé. It's Michel. You are now that person. <laughs> I'm passing. Um, bubble. So. Kettle's in a new place. She's 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 all she's all glammed up today. She's always glamorous. Um, and I just had this conversation, Jonathan Goodman, um, the Jonathan Goodman. I'm sorry, he added that to my contract over the weekend. The Jonathan Goodman. I have to say the in front of his name every time. The Jonathan Goodman. <laughs> if you guys a contract, actually, that's a no. There's no there's no contract. There's no, no contract. <laughs> no, but like legitimately, we need to get you. I'm going to make a note of that because we yeah. need to get you to sign off all rights and perpetuity to everything that we create. <laughs> <laughs> at this point it's all based on like a pinky swear that's all as we if, have right as if that's ever stopped him from co-opting someone else's ideas on this podcast and turning no, it into no, a million no, no, dollar no. It's business not, it's not that it's like it's like if you ever want to like package up your company and make it worth anything you need to make sure that the people who potentially own rights to some of the content uh, are can't cut have out the same. <laughs> yeah, are cut out of the deal <laughs> It's, it's I mean, at least you're honest. Right. No, but also, it's, it's legitimately like, I mean, completely irrelevant to our topic, but that's what we do here on the <laughs> right, online right. trainer show. Yeah, but it's, it's one of those things for. that if you actually produce material, it's really important. Like, um, if you work with with photographers, if you work with ghostwriters, mm -hmm. like you need that document. So, like, I've worked with ghostwriters and editors a fair bit on my eleven books, Ren, mm -hmm. and. Eleven. It's so we, have, we have a contract with every single one of them that signs off so that they can't come back. Like the last thing you want is a project that you do be a massive success and right. somebody who took photos for it yeah. four years Takes ago it. come back yeah, and be I like own part of it. You yeah. owe me fifty thousand dollars for those yeah. photos. Mm -hmm. It's like a like a lifetime movie. Yeah, um, so we are getting you to sign off everything. Everything. All of it. <laughs> So I, I, won't, I won't even again. Yeah, you know, we right. already do that. <laughs> I, won't, I won't even have Nike hats after this is over. So, uh, Keto, you're here. That's important. Uh, oh, beat me here, you. which always makes me nervous. Your camera is not <laughs> very good, though. What's going on with your yeah. camera? Wait, who? My camera? Kettle's yeah, Carolina, camera? Yeah. Oh, What's, I don't Kettle, know. It looks she doesn't mostly. need a great camera. She's look. Look at all the the the. As as I heard on the today's podcast, we're just here for the sweet sweet magic of her beautiful words. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten to that part yet. <laughs> that, that, that one aired today. So Woo! funny. I didn't, so I didn't funny. get past the part where we were talking about the first guy who, the first football player who slapped oh, another football slapped player. Slapped somebody on the butt. Yeah. I think, that I, I think was, I that rewinded and listened to that at least also, four times. Also a gym. The only uh, thing that I can think when I hear that is how funny it would have been to be in that room. 
It's probably, it probably a little bit awkward, man. You know, 1950s. Hey, Charlie, good job on that route, Charlie. You're playing well, my friend. Smack. Uh, Roger? Roger, did you just smack me on my backside? I did, Charlie, and I hope you received it well. Yeah, but, uh, well, uh, you, know, you know, Charlie, I don't, I don't mind a bit. Because <laughs> that's how they laughed in the 50s. <laughs> so, well, Kettle, no, you're Charlie, here. We got to take a photo. Okay, yeah, don't move for the next five minutes. Right, this photo right. gets taken. <laughs> can you stand still for the next two minutes, Garrett? Sure, I can. Wow, that's swell, Charlie. Because um, that's how people talked in the 50s. Everybody knows that. Knows um, so, Keto, we're off the rails here again early. Um, uh-huh. What else is how, new? How are things going with you today, Keto? Are you feeling good? How's, how's I am your energy? feeling fantastic. My energy is amazing. It's really, I, I, I sense that. That's why yes, I asked. It's, you know, I just got back from a trip to Ikea, and that oh, just revitalizes you? me. Yes, I feel like energized and what? just bursting with you know, <laughs> vibrancy. You know what? I, you know what Ikea is like? Ikea is like candy, the board game candy furniture. You roll the dice at a prize in a way that you may or may not be able to afford. You know, my favorite part of Ikea is, you know what my favorite part is? The, um, the studio section, the small space section. Do yes. they have that in your Ikea? Oh, they take I like love a, that. They're like a 12 by 12 room. Yeah. And they, <laughs> and they convert make, it into like yeah. a pantry with a right. bed, with a desk, with a washer and dryer. You're like, what? How? <laughs> it's a box that make it look like MTV's Cribs. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Sh- shout out to Ikea. If we, we need Ikea as a sponsor. Amber, can you hook that up? Can you get us hooked up with Ikea? Um, I'm in a tiny room now, and I'm sitting on a stack of 11 books written by Jonathan Goodman. Um, but my my favorite part about Ikea is that is the tag on each of the, each of the setups that says, like, buy this room. Right. So you don't buy the individual pieces, and then you just see, like, every single, single dude. Absolutely, through, and they just go straight <laughs> to that tag. <laughs> I, love, I love, I love IKEA, man. I got, I legit got lost the first time. It was a little alarming. I didn't enjoy it the first time, but <laughs> since since I've gone back, I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, Amber, you okay? You doing good? You got on the beach hat? You Thumbs chilling? Up. Thumbs up. Yeah, she was. Amber she was working in the car good. earlier Amber today. Wants I, to be seen on this podcast. Doesn't want right. to I saw I saw your Facebook today. She was working from the car. Just efficient. Speaking of no excuses, Jonathan, Amber doesn't make any excuses. She she dropped off Nate. He he had he had an appointment because he's super important. Um and, and while in the car, not only was she working, but somehow managed to take a photograph of herself in mid work inside of a car. Yeah. And she had two hands on her laptop. I don't know how she does it. She's got a third hand <laughs> under that belt. That's is that what's in your delts? Do you have extra hands in there? Makes sense. Makes sense. So I tagged her for no reason and asked her an arbitrary question because I know that's that that's her love language. Amber's love <laughs> language is at Amber Reynolds. That's all. That's all she. That's her love language. Anybody who writes <laughs> at Amber Reynolds, uh, she she falls immediately head over heels. It's a, it's her love language. It's extra, extra tasks with her with her name uh, tagged in the request. That's her love language. So Amber, you guys Amber use that. Amber loves out there. being immediately responsive. Right. To a low <laughs> amount, to a detriment of, <laughs> of, of very random misaligned tasks to who will right. the company. <laughs> right. And we really enjoys that. Yeah, it sets her soul on fire. Yeah. Oh my gosh, poor Amber. So, so excuse. Oh, what I was saying, Jonathan, was I just had this conversation with an OTA student. He, uh, sh- she was a little bummed because somebody didn't enroll asking me questions about pricing and things like that. And I said, hey, you got to realize that um, people don't like to have, uh, you know, sort of complex, uh, uncomfortable conversations. So it's easy for someone with who has an excuse to blame it on price, which circles us right back around to what we're talking about today. You know, I don't think that if, if, you, ha- if you were a genie, right, you're Will Smith in the lab, uh, you never had a friend like me, and you popped out and there were two people standing in the side by side, you snapped your finger and you immediately granted one person all the things that they wanted, so let's say in the health context. We'll, we'll say in terms of uh, before and after health, you know, you get healthier, you eradicate all the medication, you get, you know, you get more, uh, you get greater, greater degree of aesthetics if you're into that, you get stronger, et cetera, et cetera. And then you turn to the second person and said, hey, for $300, I can do the exact same thing for you people would find $300 for that. They have belief in it. Like it's, it's easy to see, but when you see people that don't have a sort of a confident, confident level of self-belief, they will sometimes reflect that by saying, I can't afford it. And what they mean some of those times is 
I really don't believe that I'm going to do the things that are necessary to get this done, even though I know it's well scripted. It's got, it's got everything in it I need. I don't believe that I'm going to do it. So I'm going to make the excuse that I can't find the money that I would spend on Starbucks anyway. Um, that's why I interjected when you were saying things, Jonathan. I was leading to that, but there had to be nonsense in between your point and that point. So I think I provided that today. <laughs> I'll have a nap now. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Thanks for letting me talk, guys. It's so easy, Next isn't time. it, to blame other people and not take ownership? So easy. So easy. And it's funny because a lot of the mantras that us fitness people like to share <laughs> across the internet... <laughs> Are like no excuses. Get up and get oh. her done. Oh, I know where you're going Good with luck this. With that. And then, and then the parallel to these people struggling in their lives in other ways is really quite jarring, isn't it? Yes. And um, it's a matter. And it's not like it's not a knock. If uh, first of all, I mean, if if you feel like um, I'm speaking directly to you, then you know, and you feel like, like put off by it in any way. It's not a knock on you. It's quite frankly, really damn hard to try to do everything that we want to do on any given day in our lives. There's just, there's too much, there's too much to achieve. There's so much beauty in this world. There's so much adventure in this world there's so much friendship and community in this world that you can't fit it in in so many lifetimes. Right. This is beautiful, Jonathan. And it's this almost impossible problem. And figuring out, I think, what act like, don't look at somebody on the internet who's shouting stuff one day that made you feel bad about yourself on a podcast or on Instagram, don't look at that to like tell you what to do. Amber. Yeah. It's, it's always, it's always Amber. It's, it's never, always Amber. it's always, it's always Amber who says stuff that clearly doesn't have a shred of empathy involved in it. Uh, <laughs> never me. It's horrible. Never me. I'm, I'm defined my, my, my ability to care for my fellow man. Um, the, the, uh, the stories we, tell ourselves, shape ourselves, but also the stories that were told from others that stay with us, mm-hmm. I think tell you a lot about yourself. You know, why is it meaningful? I'll tell you a, a story that stuck with me recently that's helping to shape what I do. Um, there's somebody whose name is Bill Campbell. And he, a lot of people don't know who he is, but there's, there's a book called Trillion Dollar Coach that was written about him, about his life. And he was effectively the executive coach behind basically every company, tech company that like shaped the world. I mean, literally at the same time, he was working with the CEOs from Amazon, Google, Facebook, and many others. Mm-hmm. And like they all knew he was working with all of them. Like he was, he was the guy that the CEOs went to when they had problems. Mm-hmm. I mean, arguably, inarguably, the most successful and renowned business coach of all time ever. And uh, that's why he's like the trillion dollar coach. And um, this guy, uh, the, the book about him starts at his funeral and his funeral was, I mean, attended by like all of the luminaries at, <laughs> from right. tech, yeah. like literally like Zuckerberg is sitting beside Bezos because uh, right. everybody went out of the way because this guy was so impactful. And the first chapter of the book talks about um, who's going to give the eulogy. And the guy who gave the eulogy was none of these tech icons, was his neighbor. Who he got to know and built a really good friendship with because their kids played at the neighborhood pub together. Mm. Awesome. And when I read that, I immediately... Sometimes, you know, when you read a book and you read something that for whatever reason, it's not even like a main part of the book sometimes, but for whatever reason, it just hits you. It's like what you need at that time. Mm-hmm. I, I just closed the book and went for a walk and just reflected on that. And, uh, and, and I've spoken to Allison about it a number of times. And, I, and like, 
we are going very far out of our way to work to build community around where we live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? For you, it might not be that important. Like that's something that you decide. But um, when that story hit me as hard as it did, that told me something about myself. Right. And, uh, and so this goes back to our topic about like, no excuses or excuses or whatever you want to talk about because at some point you're going to have to make a decision right and that decision is not necessarily going to be guided upon how can i make the most amount of money it might be that might be a part of it you might be in a point where um i mean making money has marginal benefit and and the marginal benefit diminishes over time the more money you have ten thousand dollars to somebody who doesn't have much money could be life-changing ten thousand dollars to somebody who makes 75 or eighty thousand dollars a year is actually reasonably insignificant in a lot of times and as you go up it becomes less and less significant mm -hmm. and so y you gotta prioritize the things that really matter to you and where you spend your time and your efforts and once you do that you continually work to reorganize those things of course in your mind's eye on down on paper if that's how you work i mean for me i just the way that i work is i just write down everything over and over and over again that's just how i i learn but and how i remember things but like that's how that's what you have to go back to right so it's not no excuses it's understand your excuses right and do the work in advance to prioritize and say like yo that thing doesn't matter to me that's not why i'm doing it and then it doesn't mean, as per our last episode, it doesn't mean that you still can't be jealous by of people who have it, which is, mm -hmm. you know, where, where jealousy comes in, right? We spoke about last episode where, <laughs> you know, I'm jealous of people who have stuff that I don't, even though I know that the reason that they have it is because they do stuff that there's no way in hell I'd be willing to do. That I don't <laughs> want to do. Yeah. Does, doesn't mean I'm not going to be jealous of that person, right? But it means that I'm able to at least put it in the right place. And it means that I'm able to identify, okay, well, like these are the things that I think really matter to me and my family. And I'm going to continually refine that. And I understand that in doing these things and optimizing these things, I am not going to be able to do those things. And that's something that you have to be okay with. This podcast is made possible by viewers like you, except you're not viewers your listeners um okay well i guess a word from our sponsors if you're a fitness nutrition coach that's looking to master online coaching so that you can help more people make more money and have more freedom then the online trainer academy can help OTA gives you the framework, knowledge, and support to have predictable success with your online coaching business. From marketing to business development to how to assess and motivate your clients online, it is constantly updated and refreshed to keep up with a dynamic market. Not only that, OTA is proven. In seven years, we've helped over 30,000 coaches in 87 countries go online. Truth is, we know what works, so you can get right to the success part. And in case you're busy working a full-time job or you're a full-time parent, know that you can go at your own pace. There's no deadlines to complete OTA and you have lifetime access. That said, if you are ready to make a rapid change and finish the course in the next 8 to 12 weeks, you can expect to invest 3 to 5 hours each week on the program. And here's the best part. If you join today, you will make an extra $1,000 a month in 90 days or I'll give you your money back. So if you're ready to build the fitness business you want and make the money you deserve, go to onlinetrainer.com slash academy to enroll today. And I hope to see you in there. Are you still trying to pick your online training software? If so, let me make this easy for you. Go with PT Distinction. It's truly the best, and I'm not just saying that because they're our sponsor. We actually use PT Distinction for our own online fitness business, online trainer coaching, and we're really happy with it. From onboarding to programming to client communication, PT Distinction has everything you need to run your online fitness business smoothly. And it's super simple to use. Now, normally they offer a free 30-day trial, but as a listener of the online trainer show, you get a free 60-day trial, so you can make sure you love them before spending a dime. If you want to deliver first-class service to your clients while reclaiming your time, then visit onlinetrainer.com slash PTD to sign up for your free 60-day trial today. So let me ask you this, Jonathan. I'm sorry, the Jonathan Goodman. Um, <laughs> I almost forgot. I almost blew my contract there. Um, 
do you think that people are, are are offering excuses somewhat because of the fact that at to to what you just said they're somewhat misaligned like they haven't been able to really define and own what's important and also haven't been willing to own their the part that they play in their current situation is that a part of why people would fall into the realm of excusing things like it can't be me so but let me I, find I a reason know. that it's happening i think i think i'm gonna give the worst answer ever i think it's situation specific mm -hmm. i think that um in cases where somebody has a serious problem that they really have to solve, maybe they're not in the best financial position, or maybe they're, mm -hmm. they're caught in a time where they're forced to be very reactive. You know, they really don't have much time. They know that they have to make a change. They know that they have to change the situation, but like there's only so many hours in a day and you have to look care of, take care of kids or you have to work a couple jobs. Like it's just, it's just difficult. Um, that is a very different situation than somebody who perhaps has a little bit of time space. Even if, even if they don't think that they have time and space, there's always the famous uh, Schwarzenegger story where he gave a, I just finished Schwarzenegger's biography. So I, I like this one. He was giving did a talk at university. It? No. Oh, you did. Okay. I'm <laughs> no, no, I just no, assumed, no. you know, <laughs> definitely. definitely not. Uh, but he was talking about giving a talk <laughs> at a university and the university kid was like, Hey, like, how do I achieve what you do? I have no time. And he's like, well, you go to school. How many hours a day do you go? Are you in class? Five. How many hours do you study? Three. Okay. Do you have a part-time job? No. Okay. Well, then you've got 10 hours a day. What the hell right. are you doing with it? Right. <laughs> right? Like you sleep for six. Right. What are you doing in those 10 hours? And, uh, and so, I mean, I, you know, I think, I think a lot of us can um, perhaps check ourselves there. Uh, you can make a lot more time than you think. But yeah. it's so, so there's different categories, right? And it's a matter of understanding your situation and kind of where you're at and where you can find time and then prioritizing and saying what are the most important things to do. That makes sense. With can, my time can, right now. Can can I defer to Carol for just just a minute? Yeah, uh, I think if, if I think don't. she'd be great because she's like the yeah. definition of no excuses, yeah. right? right? I mean, somebody right. who had a child very young moved to a new country, right? You know, as a as a single mother of three, now married to the mayor. It's like, yo, she's doing some stuff. <laughs> right. Not married to the mayor, sorry. Now, Not married. Now living Let's with the together. mayor, but like right. cohabitating. She's, 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 she's only carrying a child. She's with child, though. We oh. established that no, in the previous episode. No, oh, no, that, don't no, start that she's rumor. Not, no, she's not. She's no. not with child. Don't start that's, that that's, rumor. That's it's right. terrible. No, I forget. You know, I forget. <laughs> yes or no? They get confusing in my brain sometimes. But yeah, that's, Carolina is a great person to talk to because she's that, yeah, that's why I wanted to defer to Kettle because yeah. you know one of, like uh, Kettle and I are like the Jeffersons of this podcast. We moved on up, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> yeah. moved on up to the east side. We we yeah. both finally got a piece of the pie. So you know yeah. what what I know Kettle from you know being in financial in dire financial straits as they say. Uh, right. Mine was self probably <laughs> stupid with. But, I, you know, I, I know from coming, but you don't get to, you don't get, you don't have enough income to afford a lot of excuses, right? Like right. excuses lead to near death experiences, you know, yeah. near homelessness experiences. Um, so, you know, what do you think it is about you or how you work that allows you to sort of reflect the situations around you back on you? Like at what point were you like, Kettle girl, because this is in my mind, this is how women talk to themselves. This is mansplaining. Kettle girl, you got to get yourself together, sweetie. You, I, I don't know why your inner voice is a, is a middle aged black woman, but in my mind, it is. Kettle girl, you got to get yourself together, sweetie. You just get it together and you make something happen. So, in my mind, that's what your inner voice is like. But what was that process like for you? You know, navigating through the possibility of, ex of excuses. So one thing that I've always been keenly aware of that tends to be like a ruling general for, mo for most people, but I definitely notice it in me. Like I'm super connected to that. For me, change happens when this current situation is no longer tolerable. Mm. Whatever it is that's happening, 
Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the people who are finally jolted into changing, a, 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 making a change in their lifestyle or their financial situation or their business, mm -hmm. it's because the situation that you are in right now, you cannot survive one more day. Like the mm -hmm. thought of one more day living like this, you can't, you just cannot. And so um, when you reach that point, for example, for me, and in this, I, I, I know that I'm different to a lot of people, but might resonate with some the the one and single way for me to make drastic drastic change is to immediately spring into drastic big action mm -hmm. i don't i don't mess around i don't I'm like oh let me try and let me see how i feel it's like no everything like here's my like my credit card like here go like all my money like everything is in this basket right now and i make it work or i make it work like there's no in between right. but that works for me because that's part of my personality and it jolts me into uh you know creative uh a thought process it keeps me awake but in the best kind of energy possible because now it's right. like either you do it or you do it right, right. and so right. if if that resonates with somebody listening like then like don't be afraid to take plunges like because at the end when you don't have a choice you make it work you see you will be amazed at the right. resources and options that you find that you had never thought of before until you put yourself you chose to put yourself in this super difficult tight situation right right that makes sense John, jonathan can i kick it back to you uh, you know I two quotes i want to came... highlight i want to highlight one thing Karen I, I, said i thought you i thought you might want to um you know don't don't lose your thought uh Two, two, two comments come to mind, two, okay. two sort of quotes come to mind as I'm listening to Carol. One is I heard from Brian Tracy, I think he said, do the thing and you'll have the power, act boldly and unseen forces will come to your aid. I quote that to myself a lot because I think there's a lot of magic in activity. That's beautiful. In, in, it's, it's a pretty good quote. And the other is of course from Master Yoda who told Luke, try not, do or do not, there is no try. And I, and I like that quote too, as silly as it sounds, it's, 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 there's a lot of poignant, uh, you know, sort of thought processes in, in the Star Wars anthology. Uh, but Jonathan, you wanted to highlight something that, that Keto said, and, and I want to hear it so badly. I actually put one of the books on the floor that you wrote, and I'm sitting up straight. Uh, so so let, us, <laughs> let us know what that thought is. If you're going to do it, do it big. Right. Do it. Or don't do it at all. Yes. That's yes. it. That's it. Think about what you want to do. Don't dip your toe in. Do the work beforehand to figure out what you want to do. And then once you decide, yo, you're in. Put blinders on. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you join the Online Trainer Academy, this is what you do for six months. Right. It will right. work. <laughs> right. Don't do it for two weeks. Yeah. And exactly. then send a message and say, hey, I need to cancel my $0 trial. This didn't work for me. I got mm -hmm. news for you. Nothing will work for you. Yep. Nothing. <laughs> if that is how you're going to act, if that is how you're going to work, I hate to say this, but here's your tough love. You are hopeless. That's mm -hmm. pretty much it. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. What would you say if a client came to you and was like, I want to make a massive change in my life. And then you say, okay, here's the exact steps to do it. And they go to the gym three times over two weeks. And then they message you and they say, I don't think this is how I'm going to make a change in my life. I need to. I need yeah. To yeah. It's like, thank you for nothing. <laughs> God damn ridiculous. Does that sound to you? Yep. It's, and it makes, it makes so much sense on the fitness end. And that's why I like to communicate with our OTA coaches that way, because they just sit up all of a sudden, when you say something like that to a coach, as you're coaching them through business, it makes so much sense to them. I can feel their frustration with that, with that imaginary client rise as soon as they hear that, that analogy. And then yeah. I, and then not I, an imaginary client. Right, right. right. Because we've exactly. all had clients like that. And we've, we've all, all thought, had how could a human being think like this? This is so <laughs> illogical. This makes no sense. 
And yet we have such a hard time looking at ourselves in the mirror and saying, oh, damn, I'm that person. Right. Yeah. It me. You know what, might, Ren? It might, it might be like, I'm going to just talk over you for a second, Carolina. <laughs> As usual. I mean, I, 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 I'd I, be surprised if you didn't at this point. That's totally so fine. Bad. We all <laughs> so We'd all awful. be surprised. Oh, my God. It, I don't even remember what I was going to say. Oh, I'm glad you that's, deserve that. That's the universe. <laughs> that's the universe and it's abundant wisdom. To handicapping you mentally so that you would not be able to articulate that thought over Catalina. It's the like, universe is a woman, by the way, if you didn't know that. It's like Gwen was a bit late coming on to the podcast today. So uh, <laughs> so Amber and Carolina are both here when I when I let them into the meeting. I'm like, hello, ladies. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. Um, We're back to the future. Kettle, what was your point if the universe is not taking that away? We're back to the 50s again. Yeah. (laughs) So my point was that a lot of people, when we talk about this like big, bold action, because you're not willing to take it one more day, a lot of people are afraid of the hardship. And here's your bit of news. There will be hardship, but guess what? Your hardship becomes part of your story. Like the the shit that that, that I have been able to surpass to get to where I am, those yeah. are stories that nobody can take away from me. Absolutely. That's part of my, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> how, I figured out an entire system for how to be able to get uh, childcare and workouts and uh, my work done, my, my business work done through m- my city's rec centers because they have a little daycare. So I, I bought like this super cheap membership in which I was able to drop off my baby, go to the gym and have a little workout and then sit for three hours because their childcare lasts for four hours, sit for three hours and type away like a mad woman because those were Brilliant. the three hours a day that I had to work on my business. And Brilliant. that's how I build it because I couldn't afford a nanny because I couldn't afford a proper daycare. I didn't have any family here in Canada. So, but you find the way. Those are the things that are going to be unveiled to you as you start doing the work. And, think and again, about, like think about how meaningful that is to other working mothers who have crazy. a really hard time fitting stuff in, telling that story with that with with that level of detail. I mean, good. immediately, it's just like. You're somebody who I think I can learn from. If nothing else, you're somebody who understands me. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And then those people come to you for sure, for sure. But don't be afraid of the hardship because that is part of what's going to 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 form you into who you are. Like that's your going through the hot coals to come out in the new shape of who you will be. That's uh, the, the reality. The reality of everything that you want to do that leads to any improvement in your life is that you cannot circumvent the process. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can't get around it. And any any result that you get from negotiating around the process of getting it is a result that you do not have the skill set to maintain. Once you get it, you can't keep it. Uh, so it doesn't pay for you to skip. Look, if you get airlifted on, or you can't get airlifted on top of, uh, on top of a mountain, you know, you won't be able to get airlifted on top of Everest, but if you could do it, um, you know, guess what? You wouldn't be able to get back down because you didn't, you didn't learn anything climbing up. So you're stuck there. Like you can't maintain anything that you want to do through an easier process. It's part of what you need to, to get where you're going. This, we see this with the lottery mentality, right? Yeah. If you never, if you never learned how to save the first ten percent of your check, you know, donate ten percent if that's something that you do. Tithe ten percent if you're in the Bible Belt like me and Amber. You got to give ten percent to a church somewhere. I do it, um, you know, and invest ten percent. Then budget the extra sixty percent. If you don't learn how to do that, you mismanage a hundred dollars. You're going to mismanage a hundred million because they got yeah. stuff that costs millions of dollars too that you'll now be able to buy. So. In in terms of excuses, Jonathan, and then and then some dude's gonna show up at your house, 
right. and be like, yo, yo you're going to see you, your taillights. Hope you got good running shoes, man. You're going to be <laughs> <running. laughs> going to see the taillights of your own car. It was, is that the sound of my car cranking in the distance? How did they do that? That, that story um, of you getting your car repossessed is one of I mean, my favorites. Hey, but it's, you know, like Kettle said, <laughs> but man, again, it's, like it formed you, right? It's part it, of the it thing, made right? You who you are. Yeah. No, nobody can tell me, no OTA coach on this earth can give me any situation that I can't give them a solution to when they say, I don't think I can do this. Like been through too much, bro. Like I've, I've yeah. been, been there, done that. There's, there's a way for everything. Uh, yeah. If you are willing to navigate around the excuse, if you put that, ex- you'd be amazed what you can do. If you put the excuse in a little excuse box with a little velvet excuse bag, pull mm-hmm. the knot like a bag of crown Royal, tie that knot, <laughs> put it in the box, lock it, lock box, Al Gore, uh, lock that, who invented the internet, by the way, lock that box, bury it. You can find all types of other things that will lead to your success. You won't find any in the category that are labeled uh, no action required. Like there's just, there's just a sim, all the best toys in the eighties, there was some assembly required. So I never got any cause my mother didn't like assembling toys. Um, but all the best stuff in life, there's assembly required. Like you, you pull the pieces out of the box, not the finished thing, and you sit there, let's circle it back, right back around to Ikea. You sit there and you put it together and then you wonder why you have five screws left. But it doesn't matter. The TV's on the pedestal, it may not fall for a year. I mean, that's, that's the extent <laughs> of, what, of, of what we do. And, and you know, this podcast is made up of a group of no excuse based people. I have like, legitimately no clue what you just said for the last three right. minutes. <laughs> no, this is what you feel when I talk. Yeah, it's the same thing. I'm surprised you didn't doze off because usually I'd be I asleep. I did a little bit, but then, but then um, I did want to say, here's my piece of trivia. Uh, Al Gore did not invent the internet. Um, <laughs> liar. That's right. You're the person that you called out Amber for being. Uh, the internet liar. was invented by somebody named Tim Bonus Lee. No, no, it was, it was Al Gore. We all saw, I saw, I saw it on TV. The the internet started <laughs> as like university database. The the creation of the modern internet. Oh no! Is I've read books about this because I was when oh, I was writing God. Vironomics, I read I studied the creation of blogs and the internet and everything. Right? Lies. And that went into that book, and so the creation of the Lies. modern internet is really. Uh, largely defined by the creation of hyperlinks. So not basically something linking to something else. Not, um, not at all, Jonathan. Tim berners Al, Al Gore did it and he had khaki shorts on while he was doing it. I saw it on TV. Um, I, saw it on, I saw it on the internet. So you know that's true. Uh, Amber's saying we got to wrap it up. B. Yeah, you take Jonathan, your, you any, take your no anything? excuses box, put it on your Nike hat. <laughs> right. We got to go. <laughs> Jonathan, do you have anything to add today? You're you're riled up about the excuses. I think you I think the workout took a, lot, a little bit of the fire out of you, quite frankly. I expected you'd be a bit harsher, uh, but now no, you're just fatigued I mean, I'm not, from exercise. I'm not harsh at all. Um, I I try to be appreciative of of people's circumstances. I get frustrated. I'll tell you what I get frustrated most by. Um, tell us. Is tell the people is. <laughs> I know how much capacity we have to help so many people. Right. And I get very frustrated right. when I feel like we're not given enough of an opportunity to do so. I get very Absolutely. frustrated when somebody says, um, oh, I can't take your program because I can't afford it. And then I look and they have five other certifications all on right. fitness and nutrition <laughs> that all cost $1,000 plus. Right. And they're right. telling me they can't afford $87 a month. It's like, you have not made good business decisions. You, you mm-hmm. can't, and, and, and they're, you know, they're talking about how they're struggling and stuff. I get really frustrated by that because we have a lot of free and very low cost education as well, 100%. And if you really can't afford it, take that and do something with it. Right. Yeah. Do something Use- with it. And then right. tell me that you did something with it and I will be ecstatic. Right. Right. You know, it's not, it's not like a, like a, please give me your money thing. It's like a man, people in this industry are suffering way more than they goddamn should. Right. Yeah. Right. And, Agreed. and that frustrates the heck out of me. Absolutely. 
Yeah. I love I love how you ended that with heck. Red. After the expletive, expletive goddamn. Uh, I have all a things, final thought. Please. You will never, never get a final thought from you, Carol. I never please. get a final thought. No, I love this topic. But I want to, like, honestly invite to anybody listening that for any excuse that you have, or even if there, it's a valid reason, for you it may, it may be a perfectly valid reason why you're not getting things done. That's fine. Take mm -hmm. either reasons or excuses and turn them into opportunities. That's your challenge. How are you going to take those things and Absolutely. transform them and start seeing them as opportunities to create differently, to find resources differently, to mm -hmm. get help differently? There's opportunity behind every single one of them. So that's, that's mm -hmm. the challenge. I love that. I love that. And what a, what a great network. Like if you can't get the help in this network, I, I just, I don't know where you can get the assistance from, from the coaches to the communities. And like, it's just so much help here. So much help. So, so many knowledgeable people. Um, you know, if you have any questions, just type in at Amber Reynolds, for God's sake. <laughs> I mean, she, she's a catch all She's a Swiss army knife of this entire establishment. You know, just do that and you'll be wildly successful. So thanks so much for tuning into uh, the podcast today. Um, I said it last time, but once again, we've solved all your life problems here again in, uh, in 45, 50 minutes. You know, and it was it was free ninety nine. Uh, you can uh, you can go give us some uh, give us some great feedback or bad feedback, whatever you whatever floats your boat. Uh, <laughs> OnlineTrainer dot com slash podcast. We got show notes there and pictures and things, uh, spinning candy bars and dancing teddy bears, all the things you want to see online. OnlineTrainer dot com slash podcast. Uh, thanks for tuning in to episode forty one of the uh, show. <laughs> 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 it was really nice to see you in episode 40 <laughs> and the online the trainer show. show. <laughs> All right. And we'll we'll see we'll see you guys next time. J jingle. Jingle jingle. Get your no excuses box out. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>